major means coming together of two or more companies and forming one single company or an existing company taking over an another company. The company is wound up, an existing business is sold to a new company specially formed to take over this old company so that we call it as external reconstruction. Recording of the reserves of the transferring company in the books of the transferee company. Hello everyone, I am Purnima, faculty in the Department of Commerce and Management, Vidyashram First Grade College, Temple of Excellence, Mysuro. I welcome you all to this session. In this session 1 of Unit 2, we will be learning about mergers and acquisitions. So, in this, we have three types of mergers. Now, what do we mean by merger? Merger means coming together of two or more companies and forming one single company or an existing company taking over an another company. Now, there are three types of mergers. One is amalgamation, other one is absorption, third one is external reconstruction. Now, let us understand what is the meaning of the word amalgamation. The term amalgamation means two or more companies carrying on similar businesses go into liquidation and a new company is formed to take over the existing businesses. So, when two or more companies, they go into liquidation, that is, they close down and a new company, they come together and form a new company, that is what we mean by amalgamation. In general sense, the term amalgamation is used when two or more existing companies carrying on similar businesses. So, this becomes important. So, when there are two or more tire companies, so manufacturing tires, so when there are two or more car companies, they come together. When two or more two-wheeler companies come together, so that we call it as amalgamation. Go into liquidation. So, they just liquidate and a new company is formed to take over the existing businesses. So, when a new company is formed to take over the existing businesses, we call it as amalgamation. For instance, if two existing companies, say A Company Limited and B Company Limited, wind up their businesses and a new company, say C Company, is formed to take over the existing businesses, it is a case of amalgamation. So, when A Company and B Company, there are two companies here, A Company and B Company, so they just liquidate and they form a new company, so that we call it as amalgamation. The next, absorption. The term absorption is used when an existing company absorbs or takes over the businesses or businesses of one or more existing company or companies. So, the company is being wound up in the process. So, there is one existing company. So, there is one smaller company. So, in order to avoid competition, the larger company, it just absorbs the business of the smaller company. So, that we call it as absorption. It is used when an existing company absorbs or takes over the business or businesses of one or more existing company or companies the latter being wound up in the process. Now we have one big company here and there are two or more smaller companies. So when one business takes over the smaller businesses, so that we call it as absorption. So these two businesses are liquidated or they are wound up. So that we call it as absorption. So it takes over the existing company. So Another excerpt, that process is called as absorption. Then, what is this external reconstruction? So, the term external reconstruction is used when an existing company is wound up and its business is sold to a new company formed specially for the purpose of taking over the business of the wound up company by the very same members or most of the members of the wound up company. So, this is uh, just you are having an external reconstruction. So, here the company is wound up, an existing business is sold to a new company specially formed to take over this old company. So, that we call it as external reconstruction. So, the very same members or most of the members of the wound up co company, so they will be in 
external reconstruction. For example, if an existing company, say Bharat Limited, is wound up and its business is sold to a new company, say Navabharat Limited, form by most of the members, it is a case of external reconstruction. So, an existing business is liquidated and a new business is formed to take over the old business. So, such a case we call it as external reconstruction. Now, as per the accounting standards, the amalgamation means merging of two or more existing companies to form a company, new company or taking over of one company by another company. So, one company is taken over by another company. So, that means amalgamation, absorption and includes external reconstruction. So, all these things they together form the merger and so accounting for amalgamation, absorption and external reconstruction can be just called as accounting for amalgamation. So, in all the three cases, we find that there is a closure of one company and formation of a new company. So, whether it is a case of amalgamation or absorption or external reconstruction, so we can generally call it as accounting for amalgamation. So, there are two methods of accounting for amalgamation. So, what are the two methods? They are first one is pooling of interest method and second one is purchase method. So, there are two methods here for accounting treatment. So, first method we call it as the pooling of interest method. Second one is the purchase method. Now, what is this pooling of interest method? So, it is used in accounting for amalgamation in the nature of merger. Now, in accounting also, in amalgamation, we have two types of amalgamation. One is in the nature of merger. Second one is in the nature of purchase. Nature of purchase. So, this pooling of interest method we will use in the case of nature of merger and this purchase method is used when there it is in the nature of purchase. Now, as per the accounting standards, let us understand what are the features of the pooling of interest method. So, first thing is how do we record the assets and liabilities of the transferer company in the books of the transferee company. Now, who is the transferer company and who is the transferee company? Now, suppose there is a, a company and there is B company. A company is merging with B. So, this will be the transferer. So, this will be the transferee. So, this is the selling company. This is the purchasing company. So, we should understand. So, the assets and liabilities of the transferer company should be recorded in the books of the transferee company at their existing carrying amounts and it is the same form as they are found on the date of amalgamation. Whatever the assets and liabilities of the transferers, the selling companies, assets and liabilities, whatever is there, it should be transferred at their existing amounts as, in, as on the same form as they are found on the date of amalgamation. Amalgamation. So, on the date of amalgamation, whatever is the value of the assets and liabilities, they should be transferred. So, the assets and liabilities of the transferer company should be merged with the corresponding assets and liabilities of the transferee company in the financial statement of the transferring company company. So, the company which has sold its assets, so all those assets should be transferred at the existing values into the books of the purchasing company and they should be merged with the corresponding assets. Suppose in this A company we have land and buildings worth rupees 5 lakhs. Then in the B company also you have land and buildings worth rupees 12 lakhs. 
Now both should be merged together. So in the books of the buying company, we will write land and buildings 12 plus 5, 7 lakhs. So that is what we mean by merging of the assets and liabilities. So merge with the corresponding assets and liabilities in the financial statements of the transferee company. Then the second feature is recording of the reserves of the transferee company in the books of the transferee company. Now what about the reserves which are there in the books of the selling company? So the reserves should be recorded in the books of the transferee company at the existing uh, carrying amounts in the same form as they are found at the date of amalgamation. So the reserves of the transferor company should be combined with the corresponding reserves of the transferee company. So the same way whatever we did for the assets and liabilities, the same way we have to do for the reserves of the transferor company. Then third one is recording of the profit and loss account balance of the transferor company in the books of the transferee company. So the profit and loss account balance should be debited up with the corresponding balance of the transferee company or should be transferred to the general reserve of the transferee company. So whatever the profits and losses, so that should be debited with the general reserve. So no goodwill account or capital reserve account resulting from incorporation of assets and liabilities and profit and loss account balance of the transferor company. So there should be no goodwill account which should be taken over by the buying company. Then next one is the difference between the amount of purchase consideration and the amount of share capital of the transferor company should be adjusted in the reserves. So in the general reserves of the transferee company. So whatever is the difference between purchase consideration. Now what do you mean by purchase consideration? So it is the amount which is paid by the buying company to the shareholders of the selling company. So it is the value of the business. So whatever is the value of the business in terms of monetary terms so that we call it as purchase consideration and the amount of purchase, cons the, the, if there is any difference between the amount of purchase consideration and the share capital. So it should be adjusted in the form of reserve in the general reserves of the transferee company. Then next adoption of uniform set of accounting policies. So if the, at the time of amalgamation, the transferor company and the transferee company have conflicting accounting policies, a uniform set of policies should be adopted following the amalgamation. So whatever are the different kinds of policies, accounting policies they are following, so they should be a uniformity after amalgamation. Then the effects of any changes in accounting policies of the financial statement of the uh, transferee company should be appropriately disclosed in accordance with accounting standard 5 prior period and extraordinary item and changes in accounting policies. So as per the accounting standard 5, we are supposed to disclose any change in the accounting policies followed by the transferee company. Then next, what are the features of the purchase method? So the assets and liabilities of the transferor company should be incorporated in the books of the transferee company at their existing carrying amounts. Alternatively, the purchase consideration should be allocated to individual assets and liabilities on the basis of the fair values at the date of amalgamation. So whatever the assets and liabilities of the transferor company, it should be incorporated in the books of the uh, transferee company at the existing values. Then second one, where the requirements of the relevant statute for recording the statutory reserves in the books of the transferee complied with, the statutory reserves of the transferor company should be included in the books of the transferee company. The statutory reserve should be included in the books of the transferee company 
by debiting the amalgamation adjustment account and crediting the relevant statutory reserve account. So the amount of give, debit given to amalgamation adjustment account should be disclosed as a part of the miscellaneous expenditure on the asset side of the balance sheet. When the identity of the statutory reserve is no longer required to be maintained, the entry passed for the inclusion of the statutory reserve should be reversed. So this is the, uh, what you say, this is the guideline for transfer in, uh, of the statutory reserve. Then next recording of the reserves other than the statutory reserves in the books of the transferee company. So how do you record the other reserves in the transferee company? So other reserves other than statutory reserve whether capital or revenue arising on revaluation of the transfer company should not be included in the books of the transferee company. So you should not include those reserves which are not statutory reserves. Then the next one is treatment of the profit and loss account balance of the transferer company in the books of the transferee company. What of the P&L balance mentioned in the balance sheet? The excess of purchase consideration over the value of the assets uh, of the transferer company acquired uh, by the transferee company should be recorded in the books of the transferee company company has goodwill arising on amalgamation. So when the purchase consideration is greater than the value of assets, so if it is greater than the value of assets, then that difference we can record it as goodwill. So it is called as goodwill arising on amalgamation and the excess of the net value of assets acquired by the transferee company over the amount of purchase consideration should be recorded in the books of the transferee company as capital reserve arising on amalgamation. So if the purchase consideration is more, we call it as goodwill. If asset value is asset value is more than the purchase consideration, then we call it as capital reserve. So this we should understand then. So with this, we come to the end of this session. Hope you have all followed it. Thank you.